Alright, what's up guys? Welcome to a very quick tutorial on how you can Photoshop people into your photographs to make your architectural photography a bit more interesting, a bit more lively and give it a bit more scale. Now, some of the more important things about architectural photography besides getting straight lines is um, the sense of scale and depth. Now, scale, you can only do it uh, when there's something relatable in the image. For instance, a human being standing next to a building. From that, you can reference how big the building is um, as compared to the human being. So in this case, sometimes we take photos without a subject in the photo. And um, in this case, I like to cheat a bit and uh, Photoshop people into my images. Now, this is a very easy tutorial. Um, I wouldn't expect advanced uh, Photoshoppers to really watch this video. But for those of you guys just getting started with this, I think this is a very good starting point of how to superimpose images into uh, photographs. So for almost all of my architectural photography, I try to at least include some people in there or get a friend to stand in the image so that it gives a sense of scale. If you look through my architectural Instagram profile, you'll see that most of my pictures have people in there. It brings more life, it brings more scale and relativity to the space. Uh, but sometimes, like I said, we don't always have that luxury. So take for example, this image over here. So this image was taken at the Changi Jewel, um, pretty famous right now, it is the airport of Singapore. And at the time, this bridge over here was not open to the public yet. Nobody could get access to it, it was still um, being cleaned up and checked for safety and all that nonsense. So what I did was to actually Photoshop somebody in that image to give it a sense of scale of how big the waterfall in Changi Jewel was. So I'm going to show you guys how I created this image step by step. It's a very simple tutorial and I uh, hope you guys enjoy it. Alright, so we're just going to start off by opening up the picture in Photoshop. Um, this is the Changi Jewel, like I said, the waterfall and the bridge over here. So next, we're going to look at finding some people to add into our image. Uh, what I usually search online are architectural cutout people uh, or architectural people, cutout people, some of these keywords you can use. Uh, but for example, Arc Daily, which is an architectural website, has given you 13 free sites that offer high quality 2D people and objects. So um, you can go through some of these links to find the people that you want. Now, the trick of this is to understand your photo well enough to select the correct person. What I mean by that is that Somebody walking along this bridge would probably have a more side profile which means I wouldn't see the full face, I would just see the sides of their body. And that was the image that I was looking for, that was the type of person that I was looking for when I was going through these sites. Now there are a lot of these sites out there that you can go through, some of them have nice filters like these where you can sort them out by the activity, the light hitting them, um, the position that they're in, front angle, side, back. Uh, so you can take your time and go through this and select the one that fits your photo the best. Now for me, I chose a very neutral lit photo which was that lady that I showed you just now. Let me just pull her up on the screen. So in this image, you can see that the light isn't hitting her too harshly, which means we don't have to worry about getting the sunlight direction wrong. And she's at a side profile, which is perfect for this image. And other than that, it's a full body picture with a transparent background, which makes my work a lot easier. Now, for those of you who do not know, PNG files are one of the best to use for these kind of Photoshop uh, exercises because they have transparent backgrounds. So with my Photoshop open, I'll just drag over the lady that I chose into the image. Now you can see it's all scaled up, so we're just gonna scale her right down and put her somewhere on the bridge. Doesn't matter for now. Uh, we'll zoom in a bit just to get her at the right size. So for this instance, I'm just gonna place her leg roughly on the glass. This is a glass bridge, by the way. And just for you know aesthetic appearances, um, since we are coming from the start of the bridge, I would rather her move from the right to the left. So you can flip horizontally by right clicking and clicking flip horizontal and that will flip her around. Now, this is the part that gets tricky and a lot of people um, struggle with this, but it takes a bit of practice. You have to get the person to the right scale in the photo and um, for this instance, what we can use to reference is the railings. Now, typically railings are about one meter high, so that's about your belly button height. We are just gonna scale her down till this railing over here meets her belly button. Um, but 
because she's wearing heels, I'll give her a bit more length and put it somewhere about, about here is fine. And then we click enter and that would place her in the image. Now this is the part where you can choose where you want to place the person. Uh, you can place her right here in front of the entire thing or you can place her to the back right over here. But um, in my preference, I don't want to make it too busy where she is. You see all these leaves, it's a bit busy and messy. So maybe we'll put her somewhere in the front over here. Alright, so now that we got her in position, the next thing we want to think about is the depth. Where is she actually standing? She can't be standing here because she's in front of this railing, she'll just fall off. So she has to be in between this railing and the other railing on the other side. So what I'm going to try to do is bring all these railings in front of this layer. So a very simple way to do it is to decrease the opacity of this lady so that we can see where all the railing lines are. From there, we can start to pick out these railing lines using our selection tool over here. A polygonal lasso tool is fine with this. So you can just select out the railings over here. Now there's two ways we can do this. We can select the background layer and copy the railing and put it on top of the lady, which brings it to the front, or we can delete the lady itself. What I mean by that is that I can just press delete and bring back my opacity and you can see that now this railing is in front of her. Now that's a very lazy way to do it and for this instance, I think that's fine for now. Now we can see that the other railing back here is on the other side so this is not something we want to bring in front of her. Um, but for instance, this one over here, we need to bring it in front of her. So just decrease the opacity so that you can see what you're cutting. And it doesn't need to be too accurate in this case because this is all just going to be on, an, uh, on a mobile phone preview or something like that. So it's pretty alright. Now we bring back our opacity and it already looks pretty good from this stance. Um, you can see that she's in the right position, she's behind the railing. Now the only thing that is a bit different right now is the transparency and the effect that this glass is having. So if you look here, the glass makes the greenery at the back look a bit different. So there's no way that she would look as transparent like that with the glass in front of her. So this is a neat trick that I like to do, I like to select the lower body over here and I will cut it away from this layer. So it's now a bottom layer, we'll call this ladies bottom. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I didn't mean for that. So now that you've got both legs separated, uh, we can start to edit the bottom half of the lady. And a very quick way to do this is to adjust the fill or the opacity of it. Just a slight bit, maybe about 80%, uh, maybe a bit more, maybe 72. Now this isn't exactly 100% correct because you should not be able to see through a person. But for this instance, when you look at it from afar, it makes a bit of sense that it's lighter than the top, just not too, not too strong of a color. So the last thing that I want to do, we're almost done, is to just cut off away this part of her leg because this part of the bridge is definitely in front of her leg. So that's just one little part that I kind of forgot. And it's just a very simple fix like that. Delete and there we go. So the last thing we want to do, you can bring this into Lightroom and edit it further and just, you know, put some presets on it. Uh, but for me, I think this is pretty fine for now. And you can see the difference between the original image and this image that just by adding this lady into the image, it brings it a scale, it brings it some life and some meaning that people are meant to walk on that bridge, you know? So this is just a small little trick that I like to do with my architectural photography. I have another instance here with this old man who's standing on the bridge as well. Well, um, I'm sorry I can't find this old man again because I photoshopped this a bit earlier and I just can't find back the same old dude. So like from this image you can see it brings out the scale and magnitude of the vortex and how big that waterfall really is. So that's all for this tutorial, I hope it's been helpful for you guys. Just a neat little trick that I like to do with my architectural photography. Uh, if you guys want to see more of this, you can head over to my architectural Instagram, uh, check out some of the pictures, give it a follow if you want. Yeah, but I hope to bring you guys more of these kind of simple tutorials, simple neat tricks that I like to do. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with photoshopping your images. Uh, after all, it's just a pleasing image. I don't claim to sell this or fake this in any way. Um, but yeah, that's all for this tutorial. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't. And I'll see you guys in the next one.